Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my home worm farming channel. My goal is to help people be successful with their own worm bins. If you're looking for a friendly, supportive worm community, you are in the right place. Today, I'm going to be taking care of my African night crawlers in the continuous flow through vermi bag. At the end, I'm going to show you a simple worm tea that is very easy to make. You only need a few things. So last time the video did crash for these guys, but I did feed them some leek stems, potato peelings, uh, cardboard, and I think a little worm chow. So let's, let's take a look at these guys and see what's going on. Looks like I have a fair amount of springtails right here, and I am seeing some gnats. So that's not awesome, but you can tell that it has settled quite a bit which is nice, which means I've got room to add quite a bit of food and quite a bit of cardboard. So one of the things that I fight with in the winter time here is the moisture of the bin. So I've been taking very special care of these guys, making sure that I put water in here about once a week. And even though it's been about a week since I added water, it looks like these guys, even though they're fine, they uh, definitely could use some more. So one of the things I am going to mention, uh, I'll just go through like some of the comments. Uh, so always put your comments below if you have questions or comments or whatever, you know, just to keep them nice. Um, some people are like, oh, those don't look like African night crawlers. Well, what I have discovered is that if I don't feed them a lot of worm chow or a lot of manure, then one of the things that happens if you don't um, make a concerted effort, effort to make them bigger, they will actually get down to the size of red wigglers. And that is what you're seeing here, is that my African night crawlers, although, let me see if I can pull one out here. Here's a baby. You can see that nice purpley tail there. I'm not sure if you can see it or not. Very sparkly. Uh, so they are African night crawlers. They're just really small. And that's fine because their mission in life is to eat a lot of cardboard and paper and I certainly have a lot of it for them. All right, so let's, let's move this all over to the other side and see what's going on over on this side. I'm not seeing any evidence. I'm seeing a few potato peels, but those leeks are gone. Is it a sticker? Um, I, I do have isopods in this bin too, which probably come in on the vegetables that are fresh that I feed from the outside. This is the stem of a broccoli, and you can see how hard these are. It's going to take them a good long time. They've had them in here for probably five months, and it's probably going to take another five to completely do it. But, you know, give them some place to play, etc. So I'm, I'm just fine with that. The old Amazon tape was compostable. This new stuff, not so much. So I guess I'm just going to be forever picking that junk out. And in the future, I will not be adding it to the bin. Well, I make w more work for myself, right? Okay, so now that we've had a look at the bin, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this cardboard down. That is the old cardboard, the in-process stuff. And then I am going to add some water to it so that it has a better chance to break down. Okay, and if you see this right here, this little, I don't know, nozzle, comes in a pack of three and it fits on pretty much everything. It's stretchy. It fits on everything that is approximately the same size jug as a milk container. And it gives you a nice, nice sprinkle. Finally remembered to uh, make sure that it's sitting next to my worm bins so that I don't have to hose everything. But it does a nice job here. It comes off really easy. If you have like a, a two liter bottle, there's actually a thread on the inside that you can use this for a gallon and also for like a two liter container or a juice container. Just pops right on there. And I do have that available in the Amazon links below. It's something easy if you're into upcycling like I am then it is super easy to just put this on whatever container you have and they are super cheap so i like to up safe upcycle and i'm super cheap so win-win all right let's see make sure it's getting all of this paper 
And although it seems, I've added about a half a gallon or two liters at this point, and hopefully all of it is gonna soak into the paper. But I do have a mortar tray below, so if it is too much water, it will go straight through the bin and into the mortar tray. But considering how dry this top cardboard is, I'm sure I won't have too many problems with uh, water leaking out the bottom. I don't generally have that problem. But worms and the critters in the bin, they do need things to be moist in order to process them, so I'm willing to take that chance. All right, looks good. Three quarters of a gallon or three liters. And let's, let's get them their food for the day. That's a nice base for them. So it's a clean out the freezer day. We've got some celery. We have some Thai eggplant, um, some oranges. I'll poke a hole in them. The oranges haven't been frozen, but the eggplants have. I just love how little these things are, but just the amount of seeds. I didn't care for the texture of them. Uh, but I figured the worms would love them all the same, even if they did have a bunch of, of really hard seeds. So I'm gonna spread this out. And as all, I'm gonna hear some grapes. Um, as always, if I'm making a big feeding like this, I make sure there's room for them to go to places that aren't directly under the food. So if this does heat up, the worms have all the opportunity in the world to get into about nine inches or a foot over here. And also over here, they don't have to be right here where it's um, possibly going to heat up. And for everybody who uh, is new to the channel, oranges are fine. Um, just in moderation, like anything else, right? Got some bread here. Make sure to get that all nice and covered. But this little guy here, come here, buddy. He's one of the rock stars of the bin, kind of the unsung hero of the worm bin. Him and the other um, isopods that are in the bin, they actually are really great at shredding hard material and making it available for the worms. So if you see something that is not a worm in your worm bin, don't freak out. Uh, they're there to help, and the worms are, will be better off for them being in there. All right, let's get them some more paper. Okay, uh, here's some egg carton. And I'm gonna put this, because it's wet, I'm gonna put that directly on top of the, the food. And then I do have more dry bedding to put on top of that so that hopefully that will keep the gnats and everything from finding their way into this bin. I did have a few gnats when I opened everything up here, but not very bad, so that's good. All right, here's the rest of the paper. This is going to seal in all of the, the moisture and uh, also hopefully keep all of the gnats from wanting to get in here as well. So other people have asked about colored paper. Anything that is part of food packaging um, by at least US and Canada standards has to be non-toxic. There's lots of legislations out there that you can read on the internet. You just have to Google it. Um, it is fine. So I'm not worried about that. If it was like a TV box or something like that, I probably wouldn't put it in here. If it was colored, cardboard and it was a non-food item that the box was containing, I wouldn't put it in the worm bin because I personally don't know what the rules are for that kind of cardboard. But I do know what the rules are for this because I'm in the business. All right, then you have past scripts, paper, everything, we're all good. So that is, I'm gonna add the last, last little bit of water on top of here. Um, just to be safe because we are having a bit of a cold spell here. We got about four inches of snow the other day. Uh, my last video showed where I was prepping one of my um, garden beds and everybody's like, oh, look, you're gardening. No, just prepping. Because uh, right now that same bed is under about eight inches of snow. I shoveled the path for my little short dog and uh, put it on top of that so it gets all nice and wet and be ready for spring when I'm ready. So that's all we're gonna feed and do that. Hang on one second and I will get started making the simple worm tea. I know that a lot of times when I make worm tea, I put a lot of ingredients in there. There's a process, there's bubbles, but you don't really need to do that. 
It is very simple. Just to use the worm castings and some water. So let's get to it. Okay, here we are. What I have here is an old pillowcase. Get that wet. And then we are just going to add some worm castings to it. Okay, and then I have about one liter of the worm castings in here. And I am just really going to kind of swish this around. The goal for this is, at least for this worm tea that I'm going to be getting onto my leaves, etc. The goal is so that there's not chunks that end up on the leaves, which is why I'm in the bag. And much of this will basically just disintegrate. And that's fine. Oh, no. Okay, well, old, old, uh, crap. Okay, so, so much for that. Um, <laughs> fail. So we have successfully made worm tea with chunks. Not ideal, but I do have another bag that I can pour this through. But the chunks are fine too, so long as you don't get everything on the leaves. But you can see now, if I put this in here, it's, it's somewhere between tea and coffee in the flavor. So this is probably about three gallons of water. I think maybe about 12 liters. And let me go run this through a sieve or through um, another bag. And then we will come back and I will show you how I add this to my plants. All right, so there we are. I poured it into my one liter bag, which I probably should have started out with the first place. And then here we are. Now let's go feed some tomatoes and some house plants. Okay, here we are at one of my overwintering peppers. This is a uh, mutant mix pepper. Uh, gives me a uh, tiny little red and gold peppers. I just got the leaves a little bit wet. Overwin overwintering peppers can sometimes succeed or fail, and I think one of the reasons I succeed as often as I do is because of my worm casting tea. So now I've got all of the leaves wet and the soil is wet. I gave it about four cups or one liter, and this plant is ready to roll. Then I have started some miniature tomatoes and they are just now getting to the point where they're going to need some nutrition. So here we go with that. And I don't want them to get squished or anything, so I do put my hand over it so when I'm pouring I'm not getting anything terribly uh, strong on there that I'm not, you know, just completely hosing them. But they, these are miniature tomatoes. They'll only get to be about a foot tall and hopefully I will have tomatoes in about a month. Uh, I'm learning that uh, this is one of the ways that I can keep the fresh food coming year-round is to grow plants that fit into my china cabinet and uh, then I will have fresh food. Next year I'm going to start it a whole lot earlier. All right, now let's get some house plants. Okay, and here's one of my little house plants. I'm going to give it kind of a, a rinse. That can be helpful to get rid of some of the dust from the winter. And you can probably see I have a dish rag here in the bottom of the sink, just in case anything falls off. I don't want it to get into my, my sink drain. And here's one of my little bonsais. This is a tiger uh, bark ficus. And believe it or not, these little bonsais are the whole reason that I got into worms in the first place because worm castings and their tea are the ideal sort of fertilizer that never burns and is never too much for these delicate little trees. And that's how I got started into the whole worm world to begin with, to feed these guys. All right guys, well, if you like the video, go ahead and give that a muddy thumbs up. And if you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you wanna know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon.
right over here is the playlist for the African Nightcrawlers. And then somewhere over here is where YouTube thinks the next video that you should watch is coming from. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody. Have a good day.